Hello Year 12 and welcome to your third video for English Standard. Today I'm going to describe and explain to you your third assessment task. This one is particular for Module B. The theme of my presentation today is Agility and Exam Readiness. We have designed this assessment task to deliberately prepare you for those long-term exams like the trial and the HSC. So we've built this task to help you prepare in terms of malleability. So to ensure that what you have in your mind and the understanding that you've been building over the course of the, the whole unit can be adjusted to suit different types of questions. We've built this assessment to help you build confidence in thinking independently without your teacher there to explain it. And also to learn to write quite quickly with the pressure of time. So, Let's have a look at the assessment notification. You'll see on the sheet before you that this is the third assessment task. It's weighted 25% and you're responding in an essay form. But it is not a take home task. This is an in-class test. An in-class test meaning that the entire year group at two o'clock as it says there on the sheet on Friday the 19th of May will be on site here at school completing this assessment task under timed conditions. Now Nessa stipulates that we can have one exam, which is of course, as you all know, the trial. This is not an exam because we are not assessing a range of content. In a, the next slide we'll explain, but we're going to take one line from the rubric and test you on that content area. Let me explain. Okay, so we're gonna be looking at module B, which is of course the poetry of Robert Gray. The question that you will have on the day is very specific. So you know that you can prepare because it is about, as it says here, the text characteristics that establish its distinctive qualities. Your teacher will go through more what that means in class. You probably have already looked at the rubric. So the characteristics or the features that give it this poem, these, po these poems, sorry, its distinctive qualities, things that make it stand out as quintessential for Robert Gray. So on the day, you'll be given an essay question that specifically addresses that little part of the rubric. You can address any of the poems set for study there and they're listed. Now on the day, you will have five minutes planning time followed by 40 minutes of writing time. Now in an exam, you don't have planning time, you just have reading time, but we're giving you five minutes planning time so that you can make a scaffold and set a bit of a plan for yourself. That will be collected up at the end as well. You'll notice that I've also underlined that highlighted criteria of the characteristics establish the distinctive qualities. Now that's word for word from Nessa's description. Now we can't expect you to cover that comment for the entire suite of poems. You cannot do them all. What the best students in the HSC do is they pick the evidence from the poems to what are best to validate their argument. Now, maybe some of you are thinking, well, I'll, I'll just pick two, and you know that could be, that's fine. But you really wanna show your breadth as well as your depth of knowledge. So I don't want a little bit from everything. I want you to pick the evidence from whatever poems best work for you to really validate your argument. A general rule would be at least two, and then maybe you find evidence from others to help support. Now you'll notice at the bottom of the page there as well that we will obviously be using our Nessa number, not your name. You can't take any materials into the test with you. So no notes or palm cards or flashcards or anything like that. All paper and documentation will be collected up at the end, including the planning timesheet. You can't bring any papers out with you. And they're going to be, majority of you will be in the gym. Some of you will be up on level four and we'll also have the disability provision set up. So I'm sure you can see that we're trying very hard and putting a lot of effort into making this a really authentic experience so we can build your confidence before the trials. Now in terms of feedback, as we always encourage you in English, we want you to do some practice beforehand. So to help you prepare for this, we are going to sit a non-assessable practice question at the end of week two. Your teachers will decide what date best suits your timetable. Now, like the real assessment, I'm going to tell you right now what part of the rubric statement it's going to assess. As you can see here, I've said particularly the features, 
sorry, namely how the features affect those responding to it. So you can see there it's obviously about audience response, how audience is positioned and how we respond to his poems. Now, unlike the real day, I've actually given you the question here. So the question is, the power of Gray's poetry lies in his ability to stimulate emotion and sorry, emotive and imaginative responses from the reader. Discuss making detailed reference. Now you will do this in class with the timer on the board in a very similar situation to what would be expected on the real day. And your teacher will read that piece of writing and give you feedback so you know how to make corrections and action that change before the real assessment. Okay, so now look at the marking criteria as we always do. I'll focus on the A range because that's what we're aiming for. There are three skills that we are assessing. As you can see, the first dot point is about how well you can demonstrate an informed understanding of the characteristics of that text, meaning Gray's poetry, and the distinctive features. So that's the line from the rubric that we're really zooming in on. And how obviously that pertains to the question on the day. So really, what does that mean? We're assessing how well you know the module and how well you can answer that question. Now the second dot point is about how well you can present an effective response that's based on relevant and detailed textual analysis. You know, that you show your understanding of the text and how you can analyse that evidence. Now the third outcome in English pretty much doesn't change and that's how well you can write. So as it says here, how effectively you can organise and develop and express your ideas with language that's appropriate for our purpose and form. So that's how well you can really sustain your argument in language that's articulate and confident, how well you can voice your knowledge. And module B is a lot about personal voice. Okay, so how to prepare for this? You might want to think about really how well do you know your evidence? Rereading the poems, widening the evidence. So yes, you make your palm cards and your flashcards, but the more you engage with the poems, the easier it will be to re recall that information. Some students in the past have even recorded themselves reading the poems out loud so you can listen back to them. Poetry is a lot like song lyrics and you'd know a lot of songs. Maybe you want to make concept tables or mind maps of how the poems overlap or what are the key ideas that are common across the suite. Making some flashcards, pairing up with a buddy and testing each other. Remember that the prescribed text is the whole suite, the all the anthology that I listed on the earlier slide. So really think about how you can prepare to integrate them. Revise the rubric, maybe print off a clean copy and annotate it with your knowledge of the text. Pair up and make quizzes, check your knowledge of the text. But the best, best, best practice is writing. And we often put that off because it's harder. The best preparation is supposed to be hard. So build up to answering practice questions under exam or timed conditions. Maybe you do the first one without a clock. Then the second time you do it, you have a 40 minute timer on. I urge you to stop at 40 minutes and change pen colours when you're doing this at home and then keep writing your essay till it finishes in the second colour. Have a look at what's in that second colour. If there's some really good gem of ideas, move that earlier in your piece. Colour code your essay, highlight the quotes and the techniques. If there's a body paragraph where there's a big white section, that bit's too fluffy, needs to be cut. Pair up and peer edit each other's work. Record your essays on your phone, listen back to them, pause halfway through a quote to see if you can remember the rest of it and be willing to adjust. You cannot just memorise an essay and come into the HSC exam and expect to be able to produce an A range response. You have to answer the question that's on the page. So greater exposure to different types of questions will help you prepare.